good. Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you're having a great week. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up? How are you doing? It is Wednesday and it's a semi-beautiful Wednesday. Weather's up and down, kind of, but it's warm out at least. I tell you, it's taken me a minute to get adjusted to the, to the mornings getting darker and darker. It doesn't seem to matter how much sleep I get. If I wake up when it's dark, I just feel more tired just the way it is. So we know that this is a prison channel mainly, and we're going to move off from that. Uh, not totally, but we're going to branch out at some point. But right now that's what we're doing, right? So obviously when you go to prison, you encounter a lot of cops. When you have a criminal record, you encounter a lot of cops, right? It's just something that comes with the territory. So today we are going to do the six worst kind of cops you can deal with or encounter during an arrest. Now, I'm not saying all cops are like this. I've had cops. They arrest me. There's nothing shady about it. They take me back. They put me in the cell. I go off to the jail. I don't get smashed. Nothing like that. But that is few and far between. And we all know that anybody who's been arrested more than a few times knows that. Right? We know how they can be, and I get it. It's a game, right? Cops and robbers, right? It's, it's something that's been going on for years and years and years, and there is resentment on both sides. So once you are labeled as a criminal, then the level of respect you get from officers goes down and vice versa. So this video is hopefully a little lighthearted, right? We're not going to take it too seriously. But the number six worst cop that you can deal with is the guy who was bullied when he was younger. Now, this cop, right, he's probably gone into it for the right reasons. And I'm going to say this right off the bat. This cop is not corrupt. He's just a prick, right? That's, that's what he is. So... This is the guy that was bullied all his life or at least felt bullied or, or disenfranchised by the cool or criminal kids in his neighborhood or whatever. And he feels a specific duty to do something about it and exact his revenge. This is the officer that will give you a hard time every single time you get pulled over. He's going to nickel and dime you. He's going to look for reasons to search your car, give you tickets, or arrest you. But I will say this right off the bat. Although this cop is difficult to deal with and is like 99% of the time a major ass, they're not going to plant nothing on you. They're not going to do that because they believe in the law. So uh, I've dealt with many cops like this, right? They are assholes right but they don't cut corners they want to do things the right way so they don't shade you right they're trying to build up a proper investigation to actually get you right so uh that's why i have this officer the guy who was bullied back in high school as the number six worst officer that you can encounter if being arrested now the number five Worst cop that you can deal with when being arrested is the good cop, bad cop, right? You know that scenario. I'm just talking about the good cop, though. And why do I have him on this list? This is the shadiest cop of them all because he can look you in your eyes, he can lie to you, and he can pretend to be somebody he's not. He can use tricks and traps and feels no way about taking your freedom. Interrogation room is a no-no. Don't even bother going there. If they try to take you to the interrogation room, just tell them you're not gonna talk, they're wasting your time, just put you in the cell and get you on the phone with your lawyer. 
Simple as that, right? They might try the first couple times you're arrested to take you in the interrogation room and wait you out, go to sleep. They get mad. You might take a smack. You might take a shot. But this is your freedom. This is your freedom, right? And uh, a lot of guys don't realize until they see their cases how much evidence is against them. And the reality is they're going to try and make you plead out. They're going to try and wait you out, wait you out, wait you out, wait you out, make it take forever to get to trial. So you just want to plead, get it over with. Like sometimes they'll give you like, uh, a one day sentence just so they can get that conviction, right? This good cop is horrible. And in Canada, they don't have restrictions like they do in the US, right? In Canada, they can legally lie to you. They can legally um, keep you in interrogation even if you would, uh, ask for a lawyer and they can try and exhaust you and make you delusional and you know, it sounds crazy, but there's a lot of guys who are doing life sentences because of this, because they're kept in an interrogation room for six, eight, 10, 12 hours. They get so exhausted that they don't even know what they're doing. They're kind of delirious and they end up admitting to something just to get out of there, just to get out of the interrogation room and bury their whole lives. It's crazy, right? Like you have to be more strong than that. But not everybody is capable of being under that kind of pressure, right? A lot of people, you've seen the first 48, right? How many guys, like, two, three questions in, they're already given up, right? So, the number five worst cop you can deal with or encounter when being arrested is the good cop out of the good cop, bad cop. He's the snake that slithers in the grass and don't mind lying to you to take your freedom. Now, the number four worst cop that you can deal with or encounter is the obsessed detective, aka the T-1000. I had a T-1000 when I was younger. This detective had a personal grudge against me specifically and made it his life's work to put me in jail. Now, I remember a situation where I was at my homeboy's house with his big brothers there and the feds surrounded the house. They thought it was for them and some weed stuff, right? Back when weed was illegal. They thought it was because of that. Cut down an operation. Knock, 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 knock on the door. It's this T-1000 detective trying or arresting me that day, which was the first major arrest I ever had in my life. The first real sentence in jail that was longer than like a couple weeks that I ever had in my life. And later on, I got arrested another time. And I remember standing in this restaurant and watching as the cops are trying to set up. I'm trying to figure out a plan out of there. And this car pulls up and I see this T-1000 dude get out. He's in a full suit, suit shoes. I start running across this coffee shop. I'm literally jumping tables, running for the side door. He's running down the side of the building, also running for the side door. I got out. Now, I don't know if anybody's been to Aurora, but this is right where the, the Tim Hortons is at Young and Golf Links. I end up getting out of this place, which wasn't the Tim Hortons. It was the Buttons, which was across the street at the corner on the other side, on the northwest corner. But I run out, and this T-1000 cop, like, I'm telling you, I was 18 years old, in or 17 even, in the best shape of my life, right? I could run for miles, I could run fast. And this dude's like, just like the T-1000, full suit and shoes behind me. I did end up getting away, but they brought the dogs out, the helicopters, and I eventually did get arrested and go to jail that day. That's why I have the obsessed detective as the number four worst cop you can deal with. And I'll tell you, these cops are typically smart. They, they typically have a reason as to why they're specifically after you. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what the crimes are. If you have one of these obsessed detectives after you, it's not going to take long before you're in jail because they have so much 
at their services, at their fingertips that they can do to get you. And uh, number four, man, bad, 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 bad. Uh, I, actually, let me, let me say one more thing. I remember the last time I got arrested, this, this specific cop, okay? He was the head detective dealing with me. And they were going to allow me to break in the houses over and over and over and just stack charges. But somebody came and they intervened and I ended up luckily getting arrested that day. Um, but when he arrested me, he was like laughing in my face about I'm done. They have me on everything. I'm cooked. Like he was getting a certain like out of it, like a chi, like a, almost a, you know what I mean? Like this dude was way too happy that I was going to jail, you know? And, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say they're corrupt, but they're definitely not a cop you want to have on your tail. Now, the number three worst cop that you can deal with is the juice monkey cop. Now, I don't know how, how many of these cops are in your area, but in my area, at least when I was growing up, there was a ton of these dudes that were just clearly just jacked on steroids just out of their minds, humongous, and physically violent. Feel no way about smashing your face. No, no way at all, okay? Now, I've been beat up many times by the cops. I had a German Shepherd sicked on me after I was already handcuffed and on my stomach on the ground. I've been smashed with, with the flashlights. I've been kicked and punched in my head repeatedly. I was thrown halfway over a picket fence with my handcuffs tied behind my back. Cops can be really abusive. And typically, it's these big roid raging freaks that are coming to get you. And I'm telling you, I've been in a lot of fights in my life. And I have never been as hard, hit as hard as I have by this one cop. That every single time he smashed me, it was I was seeing stars. It was unbelievable the power that this dude had. And he wasn't even full on, like he was just roughing me up on the ground. He was hitting me really hard, but um, it's crazy. I mean, they had like the German shepherd in my face, like rah, 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 like this close to my face. Um, I remember I got arrested one time and these two big cops, they pulled, I was in a garage hiding and they came in. I remember this one SWAT guy jumps over the fence. He comes in the door. They grab me. He opens the garage door. He whistles for this other cop. This big cop comes into the garage and they close the door. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take a beating right now. This is going to be bad. But that's not what happened. They just cuffed me, laid me on my stomach and just rolled me around in the dirt and the grease that was in this garage. So my court, my clothes were all jacked up. Uh, and just another way for me to be uncomfortable and just in a bad situation. But I was breaking the law. I was never innocent. Uh, the reality is I was out of my mind and I deserve most of the, the things that I got. Uh, I'll keep it real. Like I know there's a lot of abuse on inmates or on people that are being arrested that is not deserved, but that was not my case. I definitely deserved it. Now, I will say the... Second worst cop that you can deal with is the OK Corral cop. Now, this is the cop who just bop, 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 bop at, at the drop of a hat. We had one of these cops in Toronto. His name was James Forcillo. He killed Sammy Yatim, who was standing on an empty bus with a switchblade or a buck knife, and he shot him. And he got um, found not guilty of murder, but guilty of attempted murder because they said the first volley of shots was justified and those shots killed him. And the second volley of shots, which weren't justified, probably wouldn't have killed him. Therefore, it's BS, right? Or, or it's a way to give an officer six years for killing a young kid that they literally could have tased, right? Like they could have just ran on there. He had a little knife, right? They have all these vests and all this stuff. Put on some riot gear, run in there like you extract a prisoner, right? You don't have to do that to the guy, right? 
You don't have to shoot the kid however many times they did, regardless what he was doing. I don't care, right? Like, unless he's literally on that uh, streetcar killing somebody, uh, I don't see any justification for it. So, especially a young, skinny 16 year old kid like that, that one good shot is going to take him out. He's already clearly, like, out of his mind, just storm him. Put on a couple of those shields, storm him, and just tackle him. You know, that didn't have to happen. So the number two worst cop that you can encounter is the OK Corral cop. And these cops are all over the place. Like, let's keep it real. It doesn't matter if you're in Canada, you're in the U.S., you're over in Europe, you're in Africa, you're in Asia. It doesn't matter. You're always going to have these cops, the power of a gun on their hips, at the same time, when they have a lack of self-esteem, a lack of confidence, they're put into a neighborhood where they have zero connection with the people or zero understanding. You know, you take some redneck cop and put him into an urban neighborhood where he has zero in common with the people, right? And then you expect him not to be scared and not to act this way, right? When facing pressure. And it creates these cowards who end up just, just busting at anybody who makes them scared. The OK Corral cop is the second worst cop on my list. You know, these are the guys that uh, just, they're just the worst, right? There's only one worse, right? And that is the number one worst cop on my list, the corrupt street cop and corrupt sergeant. Now, in my opinion, there is nothing worse than a corrupt cop, right? Somebody who is paid to protect the citizens that then uses that power to enrich themselves and to uh, take advantage of the very people they're supposed to be protected. To me, is the lowest of the low. It happens all over the world. And it's another thing, like I said in the past one, right? It's a mental health issue a lot of the time. It's greed. It's this ultimate power that certain cops feel like they have over people. Like they're above the citizens and it's not their job to protect the citizens. It's their job to control the citizens. And uh, uh, the, the corrupt, uh, sorry, the corrupt sergeant or, or crew boss which to me is just as equally bad, despite the fact that they're usually not the ones out doing the corruption themselves, they turn a blind eye to it. I got slapped in my face by a sergeant. Literally, they made me go down this hill, and the guy says, if you go down that hill and you make me fall, I'm going to smash you. There's a path that goes like this, boom, right this way, and they want me to go down this steep, snowy hill and if they, they're, they're going to smash me if I make them fall. When I get to the bottom of the hill, this sergeant walks up, boom, backhands me in my face. Remember, I was 15 years old. It was my first arrest. I was breaking into cars and stealing change. I was chased out into a cornfield and beaten with mag lights and just beaten, right? And then you wonder why I grew up with a resentment towards the system, right? But... The corrupt cop is a horrible human being. He will take drugs and then sell those drugs. He will use his power to manipulate and force and abuse women. And we see these arrests all the time. If you just go back months in the paper here in Ontario, you'll see this sergeant charged for sexual assault of uh, this. This one charged for, um, you know... Uh, you you get the you get the gist of it. You understand what I'm saying, right? I just think that it takes a special human being to have the power, the ultimate authority of a police officer and not become a bad person, even if they go into it with the best intentions. Now, I don't think every cop is a bad person. I don't think every cop is corrupt, but I definitely feel like because of my life uh, and the, the things that I've seen 
from officers, I'll never be able to fully trust that if I was to come in contact with them, they're not going to with me, right? They're not going to try and look for a reason to have me arrested because of my past. Or it's just a reality once you have made certain choices in your life. And I can live with that, right? I can live with that. But um, a corrupt officer that plants drugs on people, changes paperwork and misleads the court system to make somebody go to jail that's not even necessarily guilty of the crime. And we see this time and time again, man. You have all these uh, prison activists that are getting people out that are actually innocent of the crime because uh, shoddy cop work, corrupt police work. It's a reality. And uh, I don't know what you can do about it, right? You offer better training. You offer mental health screens every few years so you can make sure that the people that are in charge of taking care and protecting the population are in the right mindset to do so. They have the right training and confidence in themselves that they're able to deal with situations without just pulling out a gun and firing at people. And uh, I think that when you hire a cop, that cop should deal with the neighborhood that they come from where they have a relationship or at least an understanding of the people from that neighborhood. I don't think you should take a person from over here in like central Alberta and put him into the heart of Toronto to be a rookie cop. I don't think that's a good idea. I think there needs to be better um, vetting in terms of that. And I, and I just think that if they could try to just reach out to their community rather than just try to arrest everybody. Rehabilitation and recovery over arrest and uh, a little bit of empathy. And I feel like that's one thing the cops lack is empathy. I feel like they never take a second to put themselves in the shoes of the people that they're arresting or they're dealing with. And uh, it's horrible. And that's why you have these situations all the time obviously i share my stories with you guys so you don't have to go through these things yourselves if i could snap my finger nobody goes to prison nobody has to deal with cops or corrupt cops or any cops at all that is what i would do but in 2022 it's not a reality it's crazy out here people are hungry they're starving ribs is touching and sometimes you got to do what you got to do and sometimes that can put you in front of a cop and sometimes Nothing puts you in front of a cop. Just bad timing or bad luck. And the situation can go left because the cop is either trained badly or not uh, uh, taking the right approach with certain people. And also, uh, on our side, we could probably be a little better and a little, uh, you know, less confrontational. But I just think that's because of the way that everything's been. Right? If you show people that you don't see them as people, you just see them as an opportunity to make a quota or an opportunity to, to push your power onto somebody, then you're never going to build that bridge with the community that you need to be able to do your job correctly. Because the reality is 90% of people want the police there. Maybe even more than that. Right? But they still don't trust you. That should tell you a lot. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So I'm not saying get rid of cops. I think they're 100% necessary. I've lived with criminals a large portion of my life and although I don't think that amount of criminals that really just doesn't give a damn is that big there are those guys that if there was no policing or a different kind of progressive policing would 100% take advantage of it or any loopholes in the law that they can and just become worse and worse so um, I think that it's it's really just about Offering rehabilitation and recovery programs to guys, maybe trade programs after they get arrested so that there's opportunity, offer counseling and therapy 
and just look at people like they're humans and maybe things will turn out differently. Love each and every one of you. The new Mac Club.